Hey guys, so someone posted on the Galaxy Forum today, uh, how do I improve my backgammon? Um, they've been playing a few months, they've improved quite a bit, uh, and now they want to go to the next level. Uh, could they have lessons? Uh, they, they were asking for a coach. And I thought to myself, you know, I've been asking myself um, recently the same question, like how can I improve? You know, I've been stuck around a 4PR-ish for probably the last 20 years or 15 years. I haven't been playing that much, now I've come back for this challenge. And it all comes down to hard work in XG. Actually like working with it, not just uh, flicking through errors. So we're going to have an example. Instead of playing a match and vlogging it today, we're going to go over a match. So I just finished a match. I think since, we last, since I last vlogged, I was about 2300. And now I've uh, played a bit more over the last three weeks. And I've improved my ranking to 357, so about 2,500. Now when you get to this level, most of the players are pretty solid, or decent backgammon players around 20, 2,500, I'd say. When you get to 2,700, you're starting to come up against some really good players, and obviously above that, getting to 2,900 plus, I'd say, world class. Uh, but at the moment, I'm still steadily uh, rising, and my game's sharpening up a little bit. Um, not always playing great, but definitely getting better and my sort of PR if I look on Snowy uh, uh, XG is coming down to about 3.8. Anyway, let's dive into some analysis. So we, I played a seven point match just now. Uh, hold on a sec. I played a 3.46 according to the XG analysis, which is pretty good, but it was an exciting match and there were loads of tough decisions, which I probably happened to get right, but was probably lucky. So I don't usually play quite as well as this. And um, I think it's worth having a look over. So when I typically finish a match, maybe I'm playing 90% of the time and spending 10% of the time analyzing. Um, and that probably needs to, to flip almost to 90% of the time analyzing and 10% playing. And obviously it's not as fun and it's actually hard work, but if you want to improve, that, that's kind of what you've got to do. So typically I'd finish a match and I'd just flip through it like pretty much like this. So let's let's do it now. So I played the. Uh, the I just going to look through my errors and blunders according to Galaxy. So my first error was. A f uh, hold on. Sorry, I'm white here. So let's scroll down to the first error. Okay, double two. So I made a very small error, 0.026. Um, oh, I actually thought about this one for ages. It was quite interesting. Um, I. I made a massive play here. I, I uh, covered my five point, hit loose on the four point, and spread the checkers wide with 13 11. Um, and and uh, so, so was, no, what I did was I switched. So I played seven five, six four twice, 13 11. It's probably easier when I show you next to you later, but it looks like the right play was. Uh, 13, 9, 7, 5, 6, 4, also big, blots everywhere, just going for it. So I think the thing is, I left the gap on the 6 point because I thought it was quite easy to, to fill in afterwards. Um, but this was slightly better. I think it's a bit easier if I show you this one in XG later. Uh, it's quite tough. So, it, so my opponent made lots of errors here, uh, and I made none. Um, Rest of the game, that was the only one. 0.02 in the first game. Um, here I had a 6 3 to play. Uh, I didn't find this easy, I took quite a while over the board. Um, so that I had a choice between hitting the checker here off my opponent's ball point, my, breaking my anchor to hit here, or hitting loose. Uh, on the four point. Um, and I'm always scared about leaving my opponent with sixes from the bar. If I hit with this one, he comes in and hits with sixes. And I thought this way, I sort of keep my anchor, uh, only two blots. Um, but I guess this check is just further away. It helps me escape the anchor and, and he's got a blot himself. I'm not, he's got no points in board. I'm not really worried about, uh, leaving all the blots, but it was pretty close, 0.03. Uh, kind of 
little bit tricky. Um, so here I had a 6.3 um, and I made a 0.04. I, I ran all the way. I wasn't sure if I sort of flicked the checkers back and forwards looking. And in the end, I played 10 to 1, thinking I'm clearing the, the point furthest away, which I need to clear. And I'm leaving him 6 and 5 ones for 13 shots. Better play was to, to clear the, the 8 point uh, with 8, 5, 8, 2. It's two shots fewer. Uh, I guess you keep this, this point here. If he hits you, you might come back in and it's some structure. And then you might fill in the um, 5 point if he misses next time, which is crucial, I guess. But I was worried, actually, that if I play 8, 5, 8, 2, the top move, uh, there are a lot of numbers where I can't actually cover it without leaving a shot. There's not that many numbers. Um, yeah, so that wasn't great. It's one of those ones where I sort of tossed it up, went back and forwards, uh, wasn't sure what to do, uh, flipped a, uh, a coin and went with that play, which was wrong. First blunder of the match. Ah, so this is interesting. Uh, I had a 6 4 to play. Um, funny, I didn't even look at the top play, which was 24 18 13 9, coming up to his bar and bringing Bilber down. I looked at either making the two point or running all the way. And my thinking was if I run all the way, I'm giving him twos to hit me freely uh, and he's got this deep point in board uh, and if I make this point here I'm only leaving um, four fly shots and there's no real rush to sort of run off that that 24 point when he's made the deuce point deep he's not threatening to prime me he's got a big stack but I guess what what I what what was Better about the top player, 18 and 9, is unstacks the heavy mid, keeps contact, duplicates the sixes. It's just so, it just looks so right now when you look at it. But this is one I, I sort of play around with maybe next year if I was doing a deeper analysis. Um, another error here. Um, I looked at this one again, another toss up. Um, I was thinking to play 13 5. I ended up playing 13. 10, 13, 8, spreading the checkers, thinking if I play 13, 5s, I've only got 1s and 2s to cover if he, if he misses. Whereas if he misses after 10 and 8, I've got 2s, 4s and 6s. But I guess 3 blots against a 3-point board, um, it's just not the right idea. Um, it's more compact, just that 13, 8. No need to leave all those blots. Uh, opponent made a few blunders, but nothing else for me. Um, now, this is interesting. It causes a, oh, sorry, no. um, as it happens, a 4 1 opening roll. Usually I play 9 and 23, but because I was losing in the match and also felt he was a weaker player from the way he'd been playing and his rating, I wanted to complicate it up a bit, have a sort of more of a uh, contact game with primes and so on. So I played 9 and 5 looking for the gamut. And uh, according to this version of XG, they're very similar. <coughs> Because I think it might even be an error to slot with a 4-1 uh, in the money game. But the match score kind of led that way. Okay, my second blunder of the match, 5-3. I ran off my anchor, 0.11, that's pretty bad. Now, when I first started, not when I first started, probably for the first two years when I played, say from when I was taking the game seriously from about 19 to 21, first two years, I had a huge tendency to run off my anchors too early, really. And 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 XG and playing with XG over, over time has shown you that's really wrong, uh, unless you're really winning the race um, and you need to do it or it's opponent's position is getting stronger. So here, the race is level, I'm a roll, uh, I'm on pip up, I'm on eight. So it's a pretty close race because he's on the roll, I'm a tiny favourite. So it's not like I'm gin when I when I when I go. Um, the reason I went here was because I thought he's stacked. He's only got fours to hit me, um, but I guess he's got sevens and nines as well. So he's got four. If I run, he's got fours, three one, double two, double one, or the the 
sevens like five two six one and also six three five four it's much it's a lot more shots than it looks even though he's just got direct fours and I think obviously I was put off by uh, playing both in from the nine point just because I lose the point in front of him and leave two blocks in board and then I think he's going to play something so you bring the 14 or the eight in and it's going to be worse for me to leave next time I've got less of a structure two blocks he's going to have more builders so I thought do it now but I guess the point is um, even if I escape that and he doesn't hit me, next roll I've got to escape the other one and I'm always going to be under pressure. So it's much better just to usually sit back when you don't have a real reason to go right now. I got punished for doing it here. Uh, my old tendency coming back, I thought I'd got rid of that for my game. It's funny actually because we'll go over it in a minute, but in the, in the go before, uh, oh, where was that? Where was that blunder for me? Happen to remember um, in the go before, I had a 5 1 and I, and, I, and I could have left here. I was thinking, sort of, if I played 21 16, something like 3 2, or, yeah, uh, I was duplicating the fours and should I leave there? And then I was thinking to myself, I'm only up a tiny bit in the race, it's no rush, it's just wrong to leave, just play quietly and for me to two. And I found that play which was right. Um, um, or I played 9-4, um, uh, cleared, cleared this point here. Um, so I managed to find it at the time before, just not then. Uh, penultimate game, white, I had 4-3 here. Um, I made the 21 point and played 9 to 5 coming in. I should have just made my opponents 5. Um, my player left two blocks and, and brought the other builder onto the 3, bearing onto the 3 playing 9 to 5, which was why I liked it. But the 5 point is just much stronger than the 4. If I make the, his 4 point and he rolls any combinations with 1s, 3s, and 5s, 9 shots or something like that. Um, it's just going to make that point in front of me. So I've got to make it now, obviously. Um, again, he's got no board. I'm not that scared of leaving the blots. Third blunder here. 6-4. What did I manage to do here? So I played 10-6-8-2. Uh, coming in, and I should have just played 18-12-10-6. Leaving him threes to hit me, bringing the builder on the six. To be honest, I didn't even see that play, but that looks so right. You've got so many builders everywhere, and you just leave a three. He's only got a two-point board. Didn't want to burn him behind. I think I was really concentrating whether to play 18-8, uh, and making this eight point five away from the open point, and just leaving him direct ones. And I didn't even see 18-12-10-6. And now, looking at it, it's obviously much better. Um. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. I, I just played in from the six to the four, thinking I'm only leaving double six, which is good for him anyway, and 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 it's closer for me with the thirteen to get home next time. I mean, the 7s, 8s, 9s, 10s, 11s, but it was better just to play all the way in from 13 to 3. Um, because here my race lead is so big, uh, uh, 22, 30, 34 pips plus 10, 44 pips or something like that, that even it's double six isn't good anyway. If I play 13 in, A, it leaves the, the beautiful distribution with the four checker spread, but also... Um, I'm not even leaving in doll six, so that was just a bit sloppy. I've taken real time and attention. I think I would have found that. Um, it's just so normal just to leave the double six. Okay, so I had a six one. I got hit in the bear off. I come in with a six. I've got a one to play. 
I was better off stepping out with a one. I slotted thinking it was a little bit better for the race. I could make it maybe at a later stage if I need it. And I wanted to stay a bit further back. Um, but I should just, it's usually often, I thought if I'm hitting board, I get a return. But of course, it's unlikely to leave it there in a zero six two. Um, it'd always be pick and passing. So I may as well just come out because it's the same thing as getting picked and passed. Yeah, that was stupid. Uh, my logic was just wrong there. I thought I'd get a shot back in board, but it's really not the case in this year. I was 6 2 or 5 6, I think. Um, and the last game, another blunder. So I came in with a 3, I had a 4 to play. Ooh, I made a point 1. Uh, I thought about this for a long time, whether to come to the 18 or triple split bar, but I often triple split way too much, and here he's got this big stack on the 5, it's just too dangerous. I was worried about leaving two back on the ace point um, if I just hop out to the bar and giving him three sixes, threes and ones, but coming on the 20, it was just too big to, to split, I get gammon too much. Cubes in the middle, we're playing to 7, he gammons me for match. Um, that was just ugly. Again, I debated it for a while, got it wrong. Um, what happened here? I messed up a 3-2, um, very marginal. I think... I think because of the match score, I was four away, two away, I had a marginal double here. Um, I thought about it, but sort of, I, was, I still gave a very early double here. Wouldn't be a double for money. Um, I could have done it even earlier in that game. 6-2. I played coming out and down. And I should have played 22-16. Uh, okay, I thought I was down in the race, I wanted to stay back with this, but on the 22, but I shouldn't, I should just, just leave it on the 5. Probably did a very similar thing here. Um, okay, so I came in with the 3, and I stepped up, thinking I need play uh, for lead to a, didn't really want a 3-5 back game here, but I didn't particularly want to leave a shot with, a direct shot with the 3, but simply coming in and um, leaving a, a plane behind him was better. Yeah, so that's it. So to be honest with you, that is about how long the analysis takes uh, normally. So how long was that? Um, I can't quite tell. I don't know, seven minutes or something, I'm guessing, um, for a seven-point match, a minute, a point, something like that. Um, and that's fine as far as it goes. Um, but what we can do is download the match just by clicking here. Open up a, a XG. Um, whip it in. Uh, I should have done this straight away to save time, but you know what? Let's not. Let's just not analyze his play. It doesn't really matter. Just just my own on a world class setting. So now in 53 seconds, um, I have the result. On the whole match in XG, and I can take a quicker look at it. Now, now I'm going to try. Sorry if this is a bit long and it might be a bit tedious, but it's so important. And I'm trying to find ways for myself to improve um, working with XG. Um, um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to play around a bit. Now, I think. When you analyze matches, you can either just go through errors or you can go through everything. And the danger of going through errors is there are loads of decisions in this match. I happen to play 3.34, which is really good. But the point is there, were, there must have been 20 decisions in that match where I really wasn't sure. It was a toss-up. I sort of debated it and, and 
five of them I got wrong, we just looked at them pretty much, and about 15 I got right, which is the ones we can look at if we go through every move. Um, and if we just look at the errors only, you don't learn anything from all the other players, like why did you get it right? And also, looking at the errors in that way, sometimes isn't good enough. I mean, I kind of like, either it's an oversight and I'm like, oh yeah, I should have done that, or... Um, You kind of learn something marginal, or it goes into your subconscious because you see the error, and if it, but it's, it's not a reference position, it, it, it doesn't really stick. The only way, uh, well, not the only way, but one of the ways to train um, is to go through everything. I'm not going to go through my opponent's moves, but, but my own. So let's go through this match now. So maybe we'll just do a few games just so you get an idea of, we'll see how long it drags on. Um, okay. So let's start now. The first move, 6-4, make the two point, nothing to think about. 5-3, hit on the outside. 4-3. Um, nothing really else but come around the corner. 6-1 um, bar. Uh, now this was a kind of like a, a little think. Uh, Six five. I had some options here. I ended up rooting for the making the three point, which was right by a, a lot. The next play was point one six seven blunder, but for just a split fraction of a second, I thought about points going in with the ace point. So many returns and three blots. And the other play I looked at was two down, um, which would look like this, which is kind of pretty in a way, but in the end. This was just solid, got that one right. Um, so the 62 pops out, the double four. Um, this was quite, nothing, nothing really to learn here. There wasn't many other choices, but it was kind of an interesting play. Um, or Joker all coming in. It looks like it's gonna be lights out, maybe cubed out, but they're all double four come in um, and hit on the ace and now that puts him under pressure. Obviously, it's not good if I get hit back, but I've got time if um, he doesn't. Uh, he found. Um, and I gave him a little think about doubling even, but it's just uh, madness. Um, um, it's funny, actually. My equity is 0.148 with a no double and, and minus 0.12 if I give the cube away. Uh, just because I've got good sixes out, good fives, got two one, three one, so two one, double one, double two, double four. A lot of good things can happen, but I want the cube here. Um, if I get hit and I re-anchor, I may have a take for ages, or may not even have a double. Uh, five, three, hitting down. Uh, okay. Um, so I have to come in and hit here. There's no real choice. It's kind of exciting game. And now oh, there was this, this was the double two play. Oh, it's super close according to um, uh, XG. Let's just so I can just roll them out like a mini rollout here. These top plays uh, XG roll a plus. Sometimes you want to look at a slightly better evaluation level than whatever snow XG gives you. Uh, and now my play got slightly worse. It's not quite an error, but wrong. Anyway, so this is what I did in the end because I thought I've got good ones to come up to the edge, fours, fives, and sevens. Um, actually, the sevens don't really give me anything because one, six is out, five, two, and three, four already covered with the fours and fives. So it's really just fours, fives, and a decent one. Um, and this play gives you good five sixes, ones to the edge of the prime, and nines. Nines doesn't really add anything except double three. Um, I don't know, you know what? I'm not gonna lose sleep over this one. It's not really, can I see why this is so much better?
means a fraction more gain is 50.3 as opposed to 50 percent and slightly fraction more gammons so when you when you've got a play often you just sort of see the play and then you, you see xg's play and it's obvious once as soon as you've seen it in hindsight sometimes like this you can't really be sure or i'm not certain straight away why this is better so then there's, you have to look for clues so you've got all the percentages here so if you look where i'm pointing with the mouse at the win percentage 27 and a half uh, for the top play and sorry 50.3 for the top play and 27.3 half percent gammons um anyway the, just sort of seen sometimes we're clearing the six is right uh, maybe he comes in he's with a I don't know four two comes in it's a bit ugly because I'm still you know you know what I think we spent long enough I'm not really going to learn I think when when you analyze as well you've got to use your time efficiently because there's no point looking at idiosyncratic positions which are never going to come up again what you want to do is find positions which are repeaters uh, and you can take something away like solid tangible you can really learn something that could come up again otherwise I mean sure like on a forum it's great fun solving a problem and listening to everyone's views on a really complicated position um, but to improve your your, your gammon um, it's bread and butter stuff uh, that you've got to get right day in day out um, so here, uh, came in with a joke, a double hit, um, 4-3, uh, right, so I have a decision here, um, I, this is a start, the score's near and to 7, the cube's still in the middle, um, I picked and passed, uh, when I was thinking about hitting and, and leaving it slotted like this, and I think the reason I didn't do this, often deciding whether whether to leave something slotted or not is really tough. Really tough whether to pick or pass or slot. And here you, know, you see the gammons uh, go up from 18.9 to 20.6. You're winning um, over 2% more gammons with this play. Uh, the problem is, is that you have to cover and escape. Whereas I thought if I if I do this play, I mean first of all if I get hit back I've got three behind the five prime it's really bad two's hard enough to escape so I thought by picking and passing it buys me some time to roll ones twos and, and I might get to a position where I never have to escape all of them I can escape one man or find a, a way to give him a pressure cube because the cube's still in the middle so I didn't really want to get hit back here and delayed and I thought this bought me enough time um, but these plays can be really tricky. Um, it wasn't obvious uh, to me, so I crunched a bit with the double four. Uh, for some reason, he didn't double me out a lot in this game. Um, is there anything else in this game? Uh, some jokers later. Plays itself. Plays itself. Ah, so now um, I kind of um, somehow managed to anchor and he never cubed and we got to this position in the end where he cubed me out once I got squeezed off or hit. And I was thinking to myself in the game, what do I do if I'm cubed here? I thought this was really interesting. Um, because I've got a massive race lead, 67 pips, and... He's got me behind a six prime. Um, but the question is, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. So this is kind of something you can do, is open up another XG in the background. Um, so with the program lets you open two, in two separate windows, which is quite nice. And now if I go uh, control, if, control C and then Control V, just puts it in like this. So now I've, I've copied the position basically to a new position like this, and I can uh, play around with some cube action. So if we switch the players like this, 
uh, match creates a seven, um, cube action. Too good to double pass. What's going on here? So it's like this. Uh, no double take. Um, have I got this right? So okay, so black wins 81% uh, games against 18 and 27% gammons. Um, Sorry, what's happening here? Who's on roll? Uh, you see, I don't use this enough. I should know this inside out. Double action, yeah. But obviously, white's not going to double. Uh, let's just look for... So this, this position is too good. So what I was going to say is, basically, you play around with the positions. So whatever the thing is here, I've got a massive race lead. Okay? 47 pips. Um, so it looks like it's always too good for black, even when he's got the six prime. Interesting. And now it becomes double pass, only now. Basically, no, this is the borderline, 0 0.009, where it's not too good, because you don't have the gatekeeper. But even this, it's amazing, even this is too good to double. It's kind of surprising to me, I mean, think about the parlay. Black's got to clear the back 10 point, then you've got to run, then he's got a point on you. Well, that's not too hard, but you, you don't run a double six. Um... So he's going to have to squeeze you off, run, hit, pick up the extra checker somehow, then close you all out. Huh. So off the four point, would it be the same if I had the five point? The six prime there? So this is borderline double pass, put the gatekeeper back here and it's going to be too good again. So even when I got the five point anchor, uh, this is borderline double pass. Uh, just about too good this position. So basically, when you've got two behind the six outside six prime, it's just always a pass, and it's, it's it's really too good until uh, you get to something. Even this is close because of low volatility. It didn't really make much difference if it's here or here. Um, but now, let's break this. Let's put all the checkers like this, play around with it uh, until we get a take. Hmm. Now it's not even good enough to double. No double take. So that's a double pass, and that's a double take. No double take you. Hmm. So why is this too good? Because it's going to transpose to the same thing. You're going to have to break your 11 point. I don't know. Maybe, I guess, you make a couple of points like this first. And then you do something like this. And you get to this position. That's double take. Now the race is close to 20 pips, but we're probably going to have a no double here because now you're not so prime. So what I'm saying is when you've got time, I don't want to spend the whole blog on this one position, but you can go into XG. So this was the original position, and I was wondering to myself what I'd do uh, if I was cubed or why he didn't cube, and it turns out probably was too good. Um, no double take. But you can play around with it. Um, um, 
and learn some stuff. Just wondering if that outside prime is wrong and it's one of the positions that XG misevaluates without a rollout because anyway, the point is is that you can play a, a duplicate the position and play around with it to find uh, reference points and take things away other than that individual position. So we're learning across a whole class of, sort of you know, type game type. Um, let's go through just a few more games. This might take a bit long. <clears throat> this time I may not do the whole match, but it's kind of exciting that game. Um, oh, double six. Uh, when I made a mistake with six five here. Um, oh, that's kind of cute. I looked at different plays here, lots of them, um, and in the end I went for the ace point. And it's right just to play 18-7 like so. That's a really nice position, third roll. Um, on my second roll of the game. After you roll a double six, you're way ahead in the race, you just want to run. He's got ones and sixes to hit, ones and threes to cover, threes over here. So there's some duplication going on. That's just thematic, I guess, you're ahead in the race. He's got a blot in board. No points, just run. Keep it simple. The ace point, too clever. Um, he comes in, then what am I going to do? He fans. Um, what is the cube action if it's double fan? Uh, double take? So that's another example where we can uh, go control C, control V over here. Uh, no, I don't want to save that. Um, uh, I pointed on him with the 6-5, now oh, oh, cube action, um, double pass, I'm oh, sorry, massive pass. So even after, so it's a point one six pass, look at that, because you rolled double six and then blitz to his fan he's got no development. Hmm. Huge pass. So kind of surprised that the 6-5 is so terrible. Well, it's not so terrible, point oh three four when double one, double six, six one. Um, it just leads to a huge pass straight away. I guess this position is just thematic to run and it's just strong. It's nice. Um, and then he came in or something and I, and I doubled him here and he had a correct take and it did take. Uh, there's not much really to say here. I'm ahead in the race. I've got threats. He's got blots. Why wouldn't you double? Um, so here I had a 6-3. And I think we discussed this a little bit on the original analysis, whether to hit on the outside or the inside. Um, so it's just like a, a toss-up in my mind. Uh, and in the end, I went for the inside. I've obviously got a predilection in this kind of position to blitz in a board, but the way I made the ace point before, and now heading here rather than the outside. And I think this, this just does look better because although you've got blots, it escapes the man on the bar. Like, what do you want his bar for? You're winning the game, you've got to clear it at some point. Uh, you're so well placed to attack and returns. If, if he comes in and hits, Got millions of block men spread everywhere to hit him back, and it's just so crucial. And I, and I make this mistake over and over and over and over again. It's just not considering my opponent's board enough. I mean, in both this position uh, and and this position, <coughs> he's got no board in the block, so you can just be aggressive. Um, okay, onwards we go. Double five. To play from here. Um, I hit with one. Uh, I did look at sort of a play like uh, just coming around the corner, but there wasn't wasn't really much. I mean, I've got to come in and, and, and make the point. And then the question is where the last one is. Um, Let's just look at attacking options. 
uh, yeah. So the 6.5 was forced, making the bar coming out. Uh, this was a pretty easy play just to step off the anchor now. He's got the board, uh, duplicate ones, perfect time to go. Um, now this was, I thought this was close uh, at the time, and, and sure enough it was, like 0.004 is basically the same thing. I made the 10 point, but starting the 5 is equally as good. Um, it's a bit, yeah, really. Basically nothing in these plays. I have a tendency to make outside points a little bit more than slotting. Um, not a huge slotter in general. But when, when the time is right, that's not true. Uh, okay. We come in. Uh, we rolled a bad number here and I had a choice. I think we discussed this briefly. Uh, I ran from the back, but it's better to, to play this. Now I was worried about how my numbers would play if I made this play of slotting, if my opponent misses. So say my opponent misses, how do my numbers play? Double six, bad. Let's clear the bar, he hits me with one. Double five, good. Double four is fine, double three is fine, double two is fine, double one is good. Six five, I'm going to leave a shot. Six four, I'm going to leave a shot. Six three, I'm going to leave a shot. Six two is good. Six one, I'm going to leave a shot. Five four is good. Five three is good. Five two plays. Five one is good. Four three, all the other. Four two four one, all the other numbers play. So it's not. It's not as many bad numbers as I thought actually looking through it. That's probably why this is better. But it still leaves the problem of clearing the tent. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was anything more in this game now. It was just, uh, just a bear off. Uh, let's go on to game three. Um, Opponent runs, I make a point. Uh, he's on the bar, so oh, let's just do it like this. Uh, I hit. Uh, this look normal to come down and split. I wasn't really anything else. Just like an opening move structure. O point, bar point, can't move. Uh, come in with some junk, don't pass. Uh, uh, it just wasn't, it, it was a no-brainer that game, literally nothing to learn. Uh, unlike this one where, all right, let's just do this one more game. I think that's probably enough for the spot, but let's try and do it properly. So 3-1, uh, I make the 5.64, he makes the 2 point, which is ugly. I mean, um, if I, in a new... Um, New, a new XG. Uh, if I open, um, oops, what am I doing? File new, set up position. No, I don't want to save it. I, I do save some positions, but not really ones I want to sort of look over again. Um, so what happens? I roll. What was it? Opponent rolls a three one. Uh, six four. How do we play? Um, I'm not sure what it was match scoring. Just do, do this again, seven point match. Just to see how big an error uh, making the the uh, two point is here. Um, yeah, point of the two six. Uh, it's best just to run with a six four, six two, six three. You would come out and split, six four, you just run. So, like this guy who's rated 2400 or something, he doesn't even know how to play the opening, opening response. It's pretty poor to make a Give away 0.026, just uh, you know, anything above 0.02 is an error on the first roll. Uh, but the reason I show it and set it up is because I rolled a 6-4 um, and I blundered here. So 6-4, uh, we discussed it briefly. I ended up making the two point 
Um, um, and it's best just it's best to do this and. I was just thinking even even running is better than better than what I did making the two point. I think it's to do with the blot on the eight. So let's let's put this in. Let's have a let's have a look at a bit of a deeper dive uh, with this one. Um, okay, so why is six four right? Why is six four wrong? I think I was confused because, you know, I know this position so well where if you roll a 6-4 after your opponent rolls a 6-4, it's, it's so right to counter with making a two-point. So I thought because I'd made, he'd made the two-point, I don't want to run, I just want to make the, the two-point myself. Um, it looks to me like the key is losing the, that spare on the eight. It's usually so important and it's kind of hard to prime once you made the two point, the three point doesn't really go with it. the five point doesn't really go with the two point in a way because you lose your eight point to make the two point. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see it now why this is better. I mean, you think, oh, I'm leaving sixes and ones, but the one is a misnomer. I mean. If he hits with that one, look at his structure, his position, all those returns, it's just ugly for him. So really, forget the ones. You're just leaving him sixes, which he desperately needs to come out with and run. So it's just so much better. There's no, there's no need. This just looks so solid, so compact, so right. And I think, just maybe because my tendency on opening 6-4 is not to to make this 6-4 down out split, I'm used to making a two-point or, or running all the way with different match scores. I've never really liked 6-4 like this, but maybe I don't play those positions enough to know them or have an aversion to them. Everyone has some kind of bias uh, to some structures. Right, right, wrongly. Rightly or wrongly, their favourite kind of positions. And I've just got to start to learn to do this more spot, that 6-4, out and down. Um, I think that's pretty. And you could probably play around with that quite a bit more to find out... Um, You know, if I had a another checker here, say, um, what would be right with a six four? Do do do. Let's take his time to uh, to roll this one out for some reason. It must be pretty close. Yeah, you see it's pretty close. So now you've got an interesting kind of reference point. So now making a two point or running all the way is is um pick 'em but no eight. And coming out is quite a big error. So now if you made this play uh what, what have I done here? Coming out like this, now it's horrible. Now it's horrible. So what do we learn here? And coming out to the two, to the fourteen, or making the two is so much better because you keep the eight point. You don't need those shots. So maybe it's to do with leaving shots. Um, when I do it in this position, I mean, over the board, I thought to myself, six one, uh, three four five two, six one makes the bar anyway. I guess it's the three four five two. That's probably the thing. Those extra fly shots that matter. That's very interesting, actually, having that extra. Often, whether you, whether you have an extra spare on the lot, on the eight or not, makes such a big difference in how you play a position. It's huge. So it's like it's something when you're really unsure of a position, how to play. Think: Do I have one, two, or three? On, <coughs> do I have an extra spare on my eight point? Um, uh, back to the game. Double one. Um, I didn't really have a choice here but to, to slot. I didn't want to pile up 
two checks on the five point. <clears throat> so by slotting, making this play, also you're duplicating his threes, like three, one, four, three, um, five, three, even six, three, they're all good for him, double three. So this was pretty easy, you don't want to kind of leave this ugly structure with stacks, stacks everywhere. Um, this was one I got wrong where I'm supposed to come down with two men and, 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 and this is just more compact. I can kind of see it now, ones, twos, and nines to cover a lot. Ones and twos is 20, six, four, this is if he misses, ones and twos, six, three, five, four. So there's no duplication on the flies. So you've got six, three, five, four, double, three. Um, so it's 24 numbers. So I, I wanted to do this because I thought it was three covers instead of two, uh, even though it leaves a few more blots. But when you actually count the numbers, like 24 is plenty. You don't need, well, here you've got twos, fours, and sixes is uh, 27 plus one, three is duplicate. You know what? I'm not going to bother counting this. Like, just the point is you've got plenty of colors here. You don't need to do that. It's just an overplay. Um, So back to the game, um, this was pretty easy, I mean, two points. Um, and did I double? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I missed the double here, I think. And I think this is a match score thing. No, two all to seven, five away, five away. Um, no double, minus 0.037, so I lost Point oh three seven. I should have doubled this. What's going on? I can't believe this is a double. Huh. I didn't even think about this. I, mean, I guess being behind in the race is a slight advantage um, in a priming game. A big advantage in a way. Uh, let's have a look at our numbers. Double six is Jin. Double five plays beautifully, making the three point. Double four is amazing. Double three is amazing. Double two is okay. Double one is amazing. So all our doubles, except double two, are huge. If we roll something like six five, six four. So I think the point is we've got some good numbers which are just crushes. Like six one six three and nearly all the doubles. Uh, and the timing's really went with us, and we would have lost our market. And being annoyed if we'd not cubed. Um, and and there's time decay. If we just play something normal, he's going to crash more often than we are. I think this is difficult. I'm not sure if I had it again whether I'd find a double or two back on the ace point. I guess he's got some anti jokers to crash straight away. You know. Um, we win, we're two to one favorite, 66.7% of games. We win 20% of games, 19 compared to 10. So that's a big difference. Still a bit surprised because I'm usually an early cube, I don't miss many cubes. Uh, not sure what happened. He rolled a joker. I did double uh, 3 2. A fan. Okay, so after I found find out, come in. Cube's still in the middle, so I guess he's been playing on too good. I come in with one, uh, uh, play down. Uh, eight four would have been equally as good. Not much in it. Um, now I had a three two, and I, and, and I just came in. It doesn't really matter. What I do, because you can see the equity is minus 0.1, whatever I play, so the opponent has a double pass. If I hit or I come in, I decided I was going to come in um, because it's fewer gammas. Like I said, I thought about this for a while, actually. And so, like, if I hit um, like this, I mean, it looks attractive to kind of go for it, but the problem is we get cubed and we get hit with threes and... One, two, 13 shots where we're just going to get gammoned with three back. 
So we're back on the 24 points, 35% gamble to Lana. And then we've got three blocks he can pick up, so we're almost certain gamble. Um, it's just too much. And also, even if even if he fans, I've got to cover with a five or six and then escape three men. So it's a monster pass uh, if he doubled. So I tried to just play this to, to not get gammoned. As it happens, he played on, I don't, I don't think he understands whether it's too good or not good, not good enough or whatever, but whatever reason he played on. Um, um, and this looks ugly to, oh, 13. Yeah, so I just, nothing to think about here. Um, Make the, the, the point, the three point. Nothing here, he's playing on. Um, did I hit a shot? No, I got gammoned. Uh, um, yeah. So, you know what? I think this blog's gone on long enough. Maybe I'll do another one where I practice sort of playing around myself. but. What I'm saying is, uh, this might have gone on close to an hour, and I haven't played. I haven't played the match. This is just analyzing. So, what I'm saying is, is if you want to put the work in, this may have been a little bit of a tedious blog for some, but you've got to spend time with XG, looking through not just the, the um, errors, but every play. And when it's close, really looking at why, and then opening up a second XG, or however you want to do it, or saving positions. You're playing around with them, moving checkers around, you know, and you find borderlines, and all of a sudden things kind of click and make sense. So, my other piece of advice is play around with XG when you, when you make an error, play around with XG, try and figure it out for yourself. If you can't still understand the top play, looking at the percentages and what XG tells you, and you're looking at the number one play, and you still say, hmm, I don't really get it then post it on Galaxy Forum or discuss it with some strong players or get a coach or however you want to do it. Um, but it should be rare. Like once you get to a, I don't know, even a 7 PR, when XG tells you the right move, you should be able to work it back and figure out why. And the more you play around with like moving checkers, like where would that work, where, where is that right, where is that wrong, you'll come to the answer so you can teach yourself. You don't need to have a coach. Um, you can use XG. Uh, which is free on XG Mobile, or I don't know how much it is, 50 bucks or whatever, but really put in the time, there's no avoiding doing it, um, a couple of hours a week like that, and you'll improve uh, like clockwork. Um, anyway, I hope this was useful in some way. Uh, have a good night.